It's time for Washington Fish Side Quest. This episode, Washington Fishing Rigs. What's changed in 70 years? Hey Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. Recently, I won on a popular internet bidding site this 1951 Game Fish Regulation pamphlet for Washington State. I thought it'd be a larf to compare it against the modern day regulations. I'm filming this in the 2020 to 2021 season. As you can see, there's quite a difference in size between the two. Uh, this is just going to be a fun comparison. I'm going to leave any scathing social commentaries out, but you're more than welcome to knock yourselves out in the comment section. To paint a picture, in 1951, Harry S. Truman was president. We were early into the Korean War. We had 48 states. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii were not admitted into the U.S. until the end of that decade. And we, just a little over one in four households had a television. So radio was still the principal way that uh, Americans you know, got that kind of in-home entertainment. Well, that in books, I suppose. Uh, so I'm going to break this video into four parts. Uh, one is going to be the cost of a license, so we can see what's changed in 70 years. And then we're going to get into the regulations themselves. Now, I don't think being more restrictive is always a bad thing. So I'm not going to say, like, good, bad, and different. It, you know, it depends on the nature of the fishery. So I'm going to say regulations that remain the same will be the second chapter. Regulations that are more restrictive will be the third chapter. And then to end on a high note, there actually are some regulations that are less restrictive. Now, there's a lot in this guide and a lot in this guide. So I'm just going to keep it to top five on the regulations. Top five more, uh, less and same as far as the restrictions go. Before I get into the cost of a license chapter, I just wanted to take a minute to look at this pamphlet. It's uh, pretty nice, the 51. I'm not going to go into the 2020 because you have a copy of that. Uh, lots of pictures in there. Uh, and they're throughout. You know, there's a feller tying. Uh, some of them are comical. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Leave a clean camp. Put fires dead out. I don't know if it was popular to throw your trash in a hole back then, but it seems like that's what that guy's doing. Uh, on the back here, it's just a picture that says, uh, respect private property, always ask permission to uh, fish or hunt, and it's, you know, a guy getting chased off the property. So there was a little bit of comedy in the in the regs back then. One thing, when you open it, you'll see it's all very county-based, and when I talk about the cost of a license, I'll go into that even further. So, for instance, uh, I will say Lincoln County, Mason County, and then it'll have all the rivers and the bodies of water, the lakes usually, sometimes the streams in there. One thing that struck me was game protectors, as they're called, not game wardens, were based in the county. So each county would have the person listed, and it would have their extension on the telephone. As you can see here, old Cecil Fisher, good name to be a game protector of Davenport, could be reached by dialing 43W. All right, cost of a license. You're not going to like this, <laughs> but it must be done. So, in 1951, a license for hunting and fishing would run you $5. Uh, if you wanted a big game stamp, that was another 50 cents. If you just wanted to fish in your county, so I don't know, if you lived in maybe the middle of Okanagan County or something, your license was only $2.50, so you could get basically a license at half the price. Uh, for inflation, so that sounds pretty good, but for inflation, a $5.50 license goes up to $54.24. So that's not as bad as it sounded, but don't get me wrong, there's still quite a chasm between that and the price of a modern day license. So, in the current pamphlet, if you wanted to buy just a Fish Washington license, so you know you could fish for everything, get all the bells and whistles, it'll come in at just under 70 bucks. It's like $69.55. An Explore Washington license, which has most of the hunting and fishing bells and whistles, I think it basically has everything but pheasant hunting, if memory serves, will run you uh, $236, and uh, that would be about a $182 difference right there, between it would, taking inflation into account, between a license in 1951 to 2000 to 2001. However, it gets a little worse because I throw the Discover Pass in there, because a lot of the land you do need the Discover Pass to access. So that's another 35 bucks. You throw the Discover Pass in there, and you're looking, if you wanted to uh, hunt and fish, at a $217 increase over 1951 uh, money. Or if you just wanted to fish uh, with the Discover Pass, uh, that's only a $49 increase, which is not as bad. Uh, you know, it might be off in some of those cents, by the way, but those are pretty accurate to the dollar. All right, so there you go, cost of a license. Now that I've got you good and mad, let's talk about uh, the differences in uh, the regulations themselves. 
So there are some things that have stayed exactly the same in 70 years between these two pamphlets. I'm going to go over the top five, and I'll even throw in an honorable mention for you. So number five, and I've seen Fish and Wildlife talk about this on their website. If you like to go gooey duck and you're in luck, because the limit of gooey duck has been three, uh, I think for 75 years, which uh, incorporates, uh, you know, 70 years ago. So in 1951, the limit for gooey ducks was three. In 2000, 2001, the limit for gooey ducks is three. Number four, if you like to squid, I've got some good news for you, because in here, it's 10 pounds of squid. In here, it's 10 pounds of squid and then an additional five Humboldt squid, but you know that doesn't really come into play. So 10 pounds of market squid, uh, 70 years ago, 10 pounds, today, 10 pounds. Number three, and this is kind of more of a recent change, it's fluctuated a bit over the years, but in general, unless there is, and even in 1951 it was this way, unless there is something uh, specific to the lake itself, there is no limit for catfish, perch, crappie, and bluegill. Number two, I am not a crook. Pretty good Nixon, huh? At any rate, uh, the steelhead, surprisingly. Uh, in this pamphlet, the limit is two a day, 20 inches. And in Washington, unless uh, in the current pamphlet, I mean, unless otherwise noted, that's also the limit. Of course, back then, there was wild steelhead in the streams versus, uh, you know, that basically just being the case uh, on a few rivers here anymore that are outside the Olympic Peninsula. But still, same limit. Now, before we get to number one, let's do an honorable mention. So I couldn't include this in the list because it had changed a little. But to my surprise, in 1951, the limits for razor clams was 18. Today, it's only 15. So that's not a huge change. It is a change, so I couldn't say it was in the same category. And I'm sure you could probably get them whenever then. You could also die of, uh, you know, uh, marine biotoxin poisoning back then because there wasn't the system of uh, monitoring. But I was surprised that the, it only went down three per day for the limit. And number one, and this was a surprise to me, is in-season management. So don't get me wrong, they change stuff all the time now for in-season management for fisheries in Washington State. I bet if you were to average it out, there's at least a change weekly uh, uh, throughout the season. However, they did that in 1951. Not weekly, don't get me wrong, but there is a clause at the back of the book that says these experts from the regulations of the State Department of Fisheries due to lack of space in this booklet are not necessarily complete and they are subject to change after publication. And then it gives contact information uh, for the Fisheries Department, which in 1951 was actually located out of Seattle. So I found that very interesting that uh, in-season management, it's been around in Washington State since the 50s at least.